my name is Grey Woods. I found myself being able to move between the living world and the ethereal. There are many different planes of existence. Rather than just explore these worlds, I hunt in them. Not living or unliving beings per se, I hunt experiences and relics of the paranormal. It started when I entered the 11 mile challenge. I was a young man, I was desperate for more, and I didn't have much to live for. I heard of a legendary place that offered whatever your little heart could desire. I fueled up my 86 Ford Escort and started on the journey that's led me here. Part cowboy, part interdimensional bounty hunter. The tale goes that if you really want to obtain something special, you focus on that while driving. There's no map or destination that'll point you to it. You have to be pure and watch for the signs. If you desire money, you may see a gold sparkle in the distance. If you desire love, you may see a field of roses or smells that make you feel romantic. I desired adventure. I didn't know what to look for, but I found it. When I saw it, I turned left down a dirt road that never existed in my town. If you can survive 11 miles, you will obtain what you desire. Every mile gets progressively more difficult. Let's emphasize that you really need to desire something. If you don't truly want this, you'll fail. You may also be alone for this. I started at midnight on the dot. After driving aimlessly for a few minutes, I saw it. There was a small mountain range in the horizon. There are no mountains in my Midwest state. At that moment, I saw a turn off to the right and I took it. At this point, I knew I'd started the 11 miles. I'll let you look up the rest of the rules of the 11 mile challenge. I will tell you that I successfully completed the heroin trip and I've been taking part in the paranormal world ever since. I think that trip pierced the veil for me, as they say. I can now recognize challenges and signs to enter alternate universes. The first trip changed my life and my life gets more twisted every time I complete the ritual, but nothing was like the first time. On the seventh or eighth mile begins the real pain, the faceless, figureless beings, the incredibly loud noises, and the extreme hot and cold temperatures are terrifying and almost impossible to overcome. But man, is the reward great if you do. They say the beings littering the 11 miles are souls that did not or could not overcome. I wouldn't know, of course, but I tend to believe that. They are desperate to stop you from achieving what you desire. They must really hate me. I've gone through this maybe a hundred times now. Actually, I'm kind of getting desperate. I don't have much more to find. Let me tell you the adventure I desired on that very first trip and how I never really quenched my satisfaction. There's great scenery where I live more in the form of trees and lakes. There's a few hills and valleys, but certainly no mountains. When I saw a mountain range that would rival the Rockies in the distance, I knew I'd found my path. I know I said you have to be specific and really want the thing you wish for. I guess I got a pass because I knew I wanted adventure, just not exactly what kind. After you complete the 11 mile challenge, what you wished for will appear. If it's material and or small enough, it could appear in your pocket. Anything larger could be found in the vehicle you chose to pilot. If the thing you desire is not material, you may feel it immediately. Don't be discouraged if nothing changes right away. Be patient. For instance, if you wished for revenge, go online when you get home. See if there's a story about a certain someone dying in a bad accident. What I wished for appeared when I got home. When I pulled into my driveway, battered but successful, I saw it. A TV, not plugged in, static. Throwing the car into park, the static stopped and the theme to Candle Cove started. 
Now, Candle Cove was a TV show for children that aired on a public access show sometime in the late 80s or early 90s. It also never existed. There are accounts from across the internet of people my age, mid-30s, that have seen this show. However, there is no proof or record of this show airing. Searching it online shows no actual station or any record of Candle Cove. I know I saw it though, and I know I'm not the only one. I'm starting to see what kind of adventure is in store for me. I'm going to find this station and prove this show existed. After aimlessly driving for what felt like the better part of a day, I unexpectedly found myself on top of a hill staring at what looks like a small one-room broadcast station. Big antennas and all. The room looks abandoned and the door wasn't even locked. Cautiously entering, I saw a marionette looking toy sitting in the corner. It's a skeleton with a twisted smile. Those of us in the know would recognize this character as the Skin Taker, and he was a frightening antagonist from this lost TV show. I don't remember exactly what his purpose was, but it had something to do with punishing bad children. I don't remember him exactly taking any skin, but he looks capable of it. Not wanting to push my luck, I quietly exit the relic of a broadcast station. I had to collect myself, just finding what looks like undeniable supernatural proof that this show existed. Making the drive home, entering another dimension, I reflected on what just happened. I'm already ready for my next adventure. I completed the 11 mile challenge once, why not go for two? This trip was worse, felt like it should have been easier, but regardless, I made it out again looking for adventure. When my battered vehicle started moving away from the last mile, I felt something in my shirt pocket that was not there when I started. Slowly, I reached in and pulled out a hotel key card. I saw my next purpose. I'm going to room 217 in one of the most paranormal hotels in the country, the Stanley Hotel. At this point, it seems like I can completely break through alternate realities and dimensions, pretty much just by focusing on where I want to go. One moment I was at my home, the next I'm staring at the gigantic white and red hotel. It doesn't look like any staff or patrons are here, no living ones anyway. I walk through the front door with no one asking if I was checking in, walking towards the golden elevators. They open. Pressing two for the second floor, I'm whisked away at a speed that seems impossible for a standard hotel elevator. The plaque on the wall ahead of me just says room 217 with an arrow pointing towards my right. Strange, there are no directions pointing to any other rooms. I slowly turned the doorknob and found it locked, giving it a more forceful turn did nothing. Closing my eyes in embarrassment, I pulled out the key card I had in my possession. A quick swipe gained me access into room 217. I probably could have skipped this adventure. I was immediately hit with deep, deep sadness and overwhelming fear. Both feelings at the same time were confusing and concerning. The wall started to change color, and the floor started to light up. Is this a real life floor or a lava game? I jumped onto the couch, trying desperately to get away. I closed my eyes tight, so tight it hurt my head. When I opened them, everything was back to normal. I wanted nothing more than to leave, but there was a feeling of emptiness I knew I had to overcome. I slowly made my way into the bathroom. Laying before me in the exposed tub was the most gruesome thing I'd ever seen. I wouldn't call it a woman or even a person. It had gray skin literally dripping and falling off everywhere. The eyes were a terrifying bright red. The smell though, the smell reminded me of a petting zoo. But if every animal had been dead for weeks, laying in a hundred degree sunlight, 
I think I got what I came for. I rushed past the lava floor, out through the front door, and to the golden elevator. My adventure here was done. I do not even know what I was supposed to get out of that. The fact that I was somehow in the Overlook Hotel, not the Stanley, should have been more of a hint. I can now travel, at will, towards any place in history. Paranormal history, at least. But enough child's play. Tonight, while I'm risking my health and sanity in the 11 miles, I will desire something better. Something more real. Another trip that almost destroyed my brain, and I'm looking at Jack. I never saw the man, but knew instantly who he was. Jack had just been contacted by the seer. To be clear, I was outside his home. I wasn't sitting in his room like a weirdo when he saw the fateful message on his computer. After he read the message that would lead to a great 12 years full of wealth, love and fulfillment, I stopped him on his way to work the next morning. All the greatness he was going to encounter would ultimately end in an unspeakable, brutal ending. I always hated the ending of Jack's story, but I would fix it. All I did was stop the man who only knew me as a stranger for a few moments. I knew he had to complete a specific task at a very specific time. I made some BS small talk and he was on his way. I stood solid outside of his place of employment as he looked back at me with a confused what the hell kind of look. What happened after that was not much. Jack lived for many years after. He never married, never had kids, but had a somewhat meaningful life. And he died from heart disease at the age of 70. Not pleasant, but not the end he was originally meant to aspire to. My plan was changing, and for the better. I helped one of my favorite people in history. For my next trick, I was going to shoot for the moon. I desired peace. As I woke up from another reality, I was ready to complete one of my finest days. I walked and walked. The earth was full of life, not just human life. The flora and fauna were something out of a sci-fi show. Vines growing everywhere, animals of all shapes and sizes bounding everywhere. None came close to me, not even the predators. It seems that they were not used to humans. This is peace. Given the world back to nature, given the world back to the natural inhabitants, that's peace. I hope I can find 11 miles once more. I have an ultimate plan for myself. I enjoy the first mile. I'm relaxed. I am ready. I hope you hear my final moments. I assume the radio will transmit my experience. I hope. I trust the plan. I've taken this trip so many times. I've seen the lost souls that have failed in this journey. They watch you, judge you, try to take you with them every time you're on the journey. Weak. All of them. When the mile of hell arrives, I am ready. Before, I'd cover my ears from the screaming coming through the radio, but now... I just lean back and look toward the roof of this stolen 95 Mustang. I knew I wouldn't make it through this trip, and I didn't care what car I used. I have been given everything I ever wanted. I earned it. I didn't use this power for evil or to better myself. I also fear that I might, but now... I will forever be a part of the 11 miles. I'll be there when you try. I'll be there when your family mourns. I'll see you soon.